We are live in Studio B with a loaded Monday show. This is your BYU Sports Play-By-Play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jason Shepard. Joining us now to join the conversation about Mark Pope to Kentucky and three key BYU players in the transfer portal is former BYU sharpshooter Jonathan Tavernari. JT, welcome back to BYUSN. Happy Monday. I know this feels like kind of a wake or a funeral of sorts for a lot of BYU basketball fans watching what's transpired over the weekend. How are you feeling mentally after watching Mark Pope become the next head coach of Kentucky and the likes of Dallin Hall and Ali Khalifa and Richie Saunders all enter the transfer portal? I'll try to I'll try to answer that in a few different parts. Um, first of all, the way that they received Mark Pope at Kentucky at Rupp Arena, um, I actually played at Rupp Arena my freshman year on the NCAA tournament against Xavier. Yeah, special it's place. An unbelievable place. We actually got to go to a couple of different uh, practice facilities there. We got to go to a couple of different courts. Amazing place and. Um, but his reception and then the history behind it coming off the bus with the trophy, you know, I think in all of this, I don't, I don't have any type of negative or ill feeling towards Mark Pope at all. Um, if you know Mark Pope, you know that um, UK was and is his end goal. Is his end goal. Yes. You know that was his end game. And so, you know, the fact that BYU – you know, was a, a stepping stone, a huge one for him to be able to get there. Um, we were able to get, you know, a great five years out of him. So I don't feel any type of ill feelings whatsoever. Um, I do find a little bit odd that he hasn't sent out a, a note or thank you or anything that's official. But again, this is the business of college basketball. And, uh, you know, to focus on the second thing that you asked, um, I think Kyle Collinsworth made a point yesterday on Twitter that I completely agree. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I would have stuck with my love for BYU after my freshman, uh, after my freshman, sophomore, and junior year. And the reason why I say that is because I was the freshman of the year, and then my sophomore year, you know, I had a heck of a game against Louisville and against Carolina. I doubled my points per game in rebounds. I would have made a bag in a portal. And in my junior year, I'm playing with the national team. You know, I was very high rated. I averaged close to 16 and eight. I don't know how I don't go to the portal and, uh, you know, try to get, you know, two, three, four, five hundred thousand 500,000 from NIL. And so from that perspective, I am grateful that NIL wasn't around because what BYU means to me, I'm grateful that I never had to put a financial a dollar sign or a dollar sum to it um completely understandable why dallin richie and ali khalifa are in a portal um you know to your point that you guys made in a previous segment the way that byu does things my hope spence is actually that we can get an answer by the latest at wednesday night i think that if we wait until friday mm. two or three more people might jump into the portal as well yeah that, that's so, that, that's the tough part Right. And so, but again, the way that we do things and uh, it's just different. Um, I completely, I, I would say Dallin and Richie have a much better chance of coming back to BYU because whoever is the coach, you know, and, and I, all my cards to be up front, I hope it's Chris Burgess. And I don't know if I can say this publicly, but you know, uh, Ben Bagley, if, if I, if I'm not supposed to say this, I'm sorry, but I hope it's Chris Burgess. And the reason why I hope it's Chris Burgess is because he has been with the program. A lot of these guys were recruited by Chris. Um, I see Chris on a Dave Rose, Kyle Whittingham type of situation where he comes to, to BYU from Utah. And I don't know if, you know, Utah comes knocking. If Chris is doing an amazing job, I don't know if, if he leaves. Um, I think Chris is an amazing person, even better recruiter, and three times even better as a coach. And so... Um, my expectation is that Chris will be named the, the 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 head coach, and then I think guys like you know Barrett Peary, you know he's in the mix because he's a member. Uh, also, guys, um, I will actually quick question for you. Turn the tables a little bit. I don't see it that the head coach of basketball and football at Brigham Young is not going to be a temple carrying uh, a temple recommend carrying person. What do you guys think? 
Yeah, I, I, it was instituted three years ago, JT, and I'm glad you bring up this point when Diljeet Taylor was hired and has done, she's done an incredible job with women's track and field and women's cross oh, country for sure, right? And so I was so happy to see that, that the verbiage of, look, this is a practice, not policy at BYU. When they made that official, it's like, oh, okay, it opened up the door for something like that. But yes, it, it would certainly be something to go with football or basketball, which are largely considered the big money sports at BYU right. and, and not hire a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That would be another step for sure. I think there are enough candidates. Chris Burgess certainly applies. Barrett Perry certainly applies. Nick Robinson certainly applies. The BYU yeah. is going to find their next coach to do that. But I, I do like the idea of searching and that, that the search can include members or, that are not of the faith that is so prominent at BYU. Jason, how do you yeah, feel about that? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I, I, will, I would be very surprised. And again, not that it is a policy, but that's what we right. have always seen at BYU. And there are certain reasons why that is, is the way that it has been. And so I, I certainly would not expect them to deviate from that. My question for you, JT, is this. So whoever the coach is, if it's Chris Burgess, who, whoever it is, you've got these players in the portal. And obviously, with what BYU did in the Big 12 last year, just a remarkable season, just unbelievable. And you were hoping to be able to build off of that momentum going into year two. So whoever the coach is, day one, what's job number, what does that first day look like for the new head coach to try and keep the momentum that this team had last year going into year two? A lot of chamomile herbal tea because they're going to need to have a lot of patience. <laughs> Um, I will say this to your point, Jason, and I think you guys were talking about this before I joined. Um, Dallin, Ali, and Richie, you know, probably about five or six wins B BYU doesn't get without them, right? Um, I will go even further that um, something that Richie said, and I've said a couple of times on the show, the experience, the ability to learn and to apply the things you learn and to have that swag of I know how to walk into Allen Fieldhouse because I've won a game there. I know how to go to Baylor and play tough because we've done that. I know how to go to Iowa State and keep the game close. I know how, Now I know how to put Houston away when we play at home because we came close to doing it. So to me, I, you know, not, not necessarily only, you know, their numbers because they're all fantastic players, but also mainly the experience that they bring. Um, in all honesty, I have a hard time thinking Ali Khalifa comes back, um, mainly because of how close knitted relationship him and Mark Pope have. And so it wouldn't surprise me for him to go to you know Kentucky. Um, it is odd that he's going to Louisville, but again, I don't know the particulars of that. But both Dallin and Richie were recruited when Chris Burgess was in town. Mm. And so, you know, um, and just a quick point what we talked about, you know. Um, you know, uh, Sister Taylor has done an unbelievable job. Um, we can go as far and say that she is the Lavelle mm. or that Lavelle is the Dil Jeet of football. I mean, you guys get what I'm saying. Sure. Uh, but to me, there's a big difference between track and field and basketball and football because of the things that you've pointed out. Now, if it is a practice, not a policy, you know, um, BYU will certainly be looking at Cody Fugger. I mean, he is due a big, big-time position. Um, excuse me. I don't know somebody that bleeds blue, you know, more than more than Cody. Um, and so I think that if, you know, if, if, if you know, policy and not, you know, and not, uh, you know, being mandatory happens, I think he goes into the mix. And so a very exciting next few days. Um, for BYU fans, I think in terms of next year in the Big 12, uh, you got to be patient. You know, um, it's going to be a brand new roster. Um, it, it's not going to be, you know, the, the the musical orchestra symphony that everybody was on the same page this year. And so um, I think some people on Twitter made fair comments that I would agree. You know, this probably sets back BYU two or three years. And that's fair, right? I don't think this is negative on Mark Pope. This is negative on anybody um, but it is true because that means that Chris is going to or, or whoever is the head coach, uh, they're going to have to go and recruit and maybe they're going to get, you know, by next year, the year after, they'll be able to get the pipe going because BYU is not Kentucky or Carolina or Kansas or Houston, right? 
Um, we are going to get some transfers. You know, NIL is, is you know, okay at BYU, but we're going to get some transfers. But the way that you're successful in collegiate sports is to have continuation. Hmm. Think about all the times BYU has been successful in basketball with, you know, in the 70s and 80s with Chosich and then Mike Smith and Danny Ainge and, 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 and Danny Toulson and all of those guys. It's been a core build. Yeah, you know, and, and the way that you do it, you know, like all the way up to when I was a freshman with Trent, Lee, Jimmer, Jackson Emery, Kyle Collinsworth, you have to have continuity. So I, again, no ill feelings towards Mark Pope, but this is something that does set BYU back a, a, a couple of years at minimum. Cody Feger certainly deserves real consideration. He's an unbelievable basketball coach. I think the reason we didn't bring up his name in the opening segment, JT, is because, frankly, I expect him to follow Mark Pope to Kentucky. I, I think Mark understands what an asset Cody is, and I would not be shocked to see that happen. But if he entertained the idea of being the head coach at BYU, oh, my goodness, I would welcome that wholeheartedly if he were the guy or certainly part of that conversation. And we can continue. Like, hopefully we know like what's happening in the next 24 hours. I don't know that that's going to be the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, a lot of fans share your sentiment and like, let's get this thing done super fast. But JT, yeah. as always, we appreciate the insight. And uh, I hope that we are discussing a new BYU basketball head coach by Wednesday at the latest. That, that would be fantastic. Thanks, JT. I, I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much.